Yes, thank you very much for joining our demonstration today, uh, the demonstration of PointSense plant. Here is the agenda for the next couple of minutes. We start with a very short overview about our company, our company about Qubit, and then we go directly to the software to PointSense plant, the new product. And uh, you know, Point Cloud is a product we have already for seven years and it's much more than pipes. So we just give a small overview about the whole Point Cloud product. And the last thing uh, is to talk about prices and the possibility to get your own uh, opinion about our software, how to trial the software. Allah, yes? Uh, go ahead and show your screen. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Okay, I go back. Sorry that I haven't shared my screen. Um, okay, yes, uh, here we are back on the agenda of, of today. And uh, the last thing will be that you can give us uh, a feedback after leaving the session. Uh, a feedback form will appear and you may the something in that would be very nice um, and for people who already know something about about point sense plan maybe from the spark conference or from the beta uh, the new things are given to you in the outer space section we will talk about insulation about tagging and the improved user interface so even for uh, beta participants uh, will be something new Okay, now about our company or first uh, about the speakers today. I'm Oliver Bringmann. I'm the co-founder of Qubit in Germany and I'm responsible for the development. Uh, and for John Wan, it is the early morning in the US. He is our AutoCast specialist and uh, he uh, knows a lot about piping and plant and yes, and here we have uh, Katrin Pals in Germany. She organized the meeting and helps me maybe with the questions later and maybe with the English. <laughs> okay, we are a German-based software company with a headquarter in Dresden. Today we have 1,600 customers and more than five, 400 licenses in the market. And our mission is uh, to get the real world, to get the reality into the well-known AutoCAD environment. And for this, we develop AutoCAD-based software solutions for surveying and capturing existing conditions. And uh, people who uh, are specialists not in the field of surveying, they can care about uh, their, uh, the content of the surveying and not uh, of the surveying itself. So we sometimes say it's a surveying for non-surveyors too. Yes. And here are our major products. Um, you see we support all the main uh, sensors uh, in the AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT environment. So we support total stations, cameras, laser scanning, GPS, and something more. But today we talk only about uh, the laser scanning part, about the product Point Cloud. And um, yes, uh, the name Point Cloud is a very generic name, and that's why we decided to rename the product in the ne next few years. We will call it uh, Point Sense. Um, and we start right now with the Point Sense plant product. Yes, today we can only give you a very short overview. And uh, there are a lot of materials available, videos and flyers and so on. But the written manual is still the best reference. And uh, yes. Okay, um, now let us go to the points and plant. Um, and the first thing I want to give you is uh, an overview about the central workflow, the inner circle. The idea for the points and plant came up in spring 2000, 2010, and Point Cloud has already been a successful very generic tool to handle millions of points in AutoCAD and uh, Qubit USA and especially their clients 
ask us for an industry specific solution for the industrial facility design yeah and the answer was yes let us pipe the cloud and uh, today now we have the solution um, the design objectives we have to resolve in the development process where it has to be very efficient but uh, and, and it has to be automated as possible but not too automated you know uh, it's better to uh, avoid errors before they occur and uh, the data should be suitable for design software so we decided to use standard and uh, user-defined catalogs we want to support um, uh, standard AutoCAD objects for the export and uh, the model should fit uh, to the constraints of uh, design software. I think the uh, last term is uh, something we have to explain a little bit more in detail, uh, why models should fit the constraints of the design software. Um, maybe you know that uh, those uh, design software is actually made for the greenfield situation, not for brownfield situations. And that means that such programs expect uh, everything would be, has to be coplanar, coaxial, cylinder axis, and of course uh, it needs standard objects. And for this is generalization needed. Here, a graphic about this. Um, we have two uh, things to do. The first is uh, local pattern recognition. After the local pattern recognition, uh, not every axis meets the constraints. And so we have a next step to do. Uh, this is uh, apply constraints. And I will demonstrate it now directly in the AutoCAD. So I go to the AutoCAD. In this case, it is uh, Autodesk, uh, AutoCAD Architecture 2012. And I have a very small piece of a cloud here. I go to the orbit to get, give you an impression. And I start to go to the uh, point and plant. Um, yeah, the screen is too small. Uh, I start with uh, create a pipe run. And it asked me whether to start from an existing pipe run or to start uh, with nothing. And I want to start with nothing and find a new run. And now the software asks me for the first pipe. I do it, I answer it uh, just by clicking two points. Now the software is uh, fitting the pipe and looking in the direction of the second point and it finds that there could be something of a catalog. Um, for this um, demo, I have only a very small catalog. You will see a bigger one later. Um, and uh, all entries of the catalog are in this list. And the best fit solution from the standpoint of pattern recognition is now the inline fitting here. And so I can just push on the button insert and continue and get the item here and it's look, looking forward for the next um, pipe. And after the pipe, uh, it could detect an elbow and with the less probability, a T branch as well. The best one is the elbow now. So I say insert and continue. I get the elbow and now uh, it um, gives me the hypothesis of a T branch here. Yes, I want to have it. So I get the T branch. Okay, now I want to finish the run and show how to go on another run, how to work with branches. Uh, so I go back on the create pipe run, but now I select the second option, the second option continue a run. And I select uh, the beginning of the run and I want to have, no, not an inline fitting, but a pipe and say insert and continue. Yeah, in this case, I have to select a second point. Yeah, that's enough for the first impression. Uh, what you see, uh, the objects are locally uh, best fit solutions. 
uh, if I go to orbit, you see there's still some gaps here and the objects are not perfectly adjusted to each other. And for this, I apply the constraints with this button here. I have to select plant objects. I have to select one plant object. And with the selection of this object, all, all connected objects are selected. Then I press enter and start the apply constraints. You will not see that much, but uh, maybe something here in this region. I assume something should happen here. Yes. And here. And all gaps are filled now. Okay. I go back to the PowerPoint. Yeah, um, this is the inner circle. Uh, what does it mean? The data flow diagram here shows what happened in the last few minutes. I started with the cloud and uh, the interactive modeling we call walk the run. And this is the first circle, yes, this is the inner circle. I have to repeat walk the run for every run in the cloud. And what I get uh, is plant objects. They are as measured at the beginning. And so I have to apply constraints and get the consistent uh, objects later I can export to other applications. Yeah, and for the walk, the run, I need a catalog, I need items from a library. And for this, we invented the qubit plant model uh, as a name for the catalog. Yeah, and you have to repeat the whole process for all clouds, all drawings, of your current project. Mm, you know, pattern recognition needs uh, parameters. And uh, for those parameters, we have decided uh, to have only a few, uh, small set of those parameters. We have an N value, it's the noise value of the cloud, and the A value, this is the average distance of two points. And we think those parameters are easy to understand, and uh, those parameters we need for the pattern recognition. Now let's have a look on the outer space of the point sense plant uh, application. Um, if a user works with his own data, not with uh, the tutorial data or with our uh, examples, uh, new questions will appear. Questions like what happens if pattern recognition fails? What happens if a type is missing? What, is, what happens if uh, an insulation appears? And what can I do if I have to work in other applications than AutoCAD or in other applications than Point Sense Plant? And all this question will uh, answer the next demo. But before we start with the big demo, I want to give you an overview for the second and for the last question by explaining a diagram. Um, here we have the inner circle again. And in some cases, uh, you will not find your object, your type in the qubit plant model. For this, it's needed that you uh, use an external catalog or you add types to the qubit plant model. For this, we have a command so-called uh, edit KPM. And on the other side, at the end of the workflow, you may export, you may to, uh, you want to have the objects in other applications. And for this, we have an export or explode option. Okay, and this is again a circle. You don't have to uh, repeat in one um, project, but if you have many of them, many projects, you have to repeat uh, to add an edit and add uh, object to the catalog and to export uh, again and again. Okay, um, yes, now I go uh, give the control to John in the US and he will uh, explain you uh, how uh, all these questions are answered directly in the software. 